Welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be episode 3 of FXR. I'm going to do a little bit further into those turn signals. I just want to show you what we have to deal with here in Florida. In case you're from up north and you think Florida is the place to come. I mean, at first glance, it would seem like it. I mean, this is beautiful. This is, this is January. How could you possibly say anything bad about Florida in January? The blue sky. The weather's actually pretty warm. It's like maybe in the upper 70s, low 80s. I mean, what's really to complain about? Everything's just beautiful. Oh, wait a minute. Is that an alligator on my property? Just sitting there? But they can't be, it's fake. Nope, not fake. That's a real alligator in my backyard. Um, not really a fan. All right, as I said, we're beginning episode three on the channel. Um, episode two made a bunch of progress with the wiring, pretty much got everything working. Um, I did, and I didn't show this, but I did add my LED flasher, put my original headlight back on. I'll show you the headlights working a little bit later. Um, in this episode, I'm going to install my new handlebar mounted uh, turn signals. And I'm also really going to start with replacing the hardware since I had to drill out all the hardware that was um, stripped. So I went and got some new hardware. So we're going to put that in and get the controls actually set up completely. Um, and then if time permits, we're going to try um, hacking up that back tail light mount and see if I can fit my LED tail light on. Um, I slightly changed the type of bolts. Uh, this had like the button head type Allens and I switched it to the uh, round style, I don't know what cap, I think they're called cap bolts or cap, I'm not sure, doesn't matter. Um, these allow you to use a bigger Allen wrench, they strip out a lot less, so controls are totally on now. Um, what I'm about to do is I'm going to take off the tail light mount from the inside of the fender. Uh, I want to say it's a half inch or a 7 16 two little nuts on the back side of this, and this whole mount will come off. I'm going to have to cut the wires that go to the tail light because they don't unclip or anything like that. So I'm going to cut those. I'm going to cut each side to the tail lights here. And then um, I'm actually going to install, against my better judgment, I'm going to use just uh, like bullet connectors to connect all the wires between these because if I ever want to take the tail light out, if I install like a big plug, like a big five pin plug, it's hard to pull those out of anything. So I think the bullet style connectors will be fine, but I'm going to try to do a good job and shrink wrap the, uh, the ends of the connectors, and I'll show you that when the time comes. But the first step is get this off, and I'm going to trim this metal right here so I can hopefully fit my LED tail light. So I'll show you once I get Okay, let me show you what I did. Um, again, I know there's going to be some people who are probably going to be upset that I did this because I chopped up a part, but um, I took that rear tail light, and as you can see, I cut off the area where the light bulb socket was and just kind of um, sanded this down real flat and I took a rasp around the inside so it's not sharp. Now, sorry, do this with one hand. Now when I take my LED light and stick it in there, and again, doing this one hand, so hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Well, anyway, you get the idea. Um, it fits together now, you can't tell by the way I'm holding it, but it does. It fits together and there's plenty of room back here for the wires to come through. So that works. Cutting that down works. So, um, And the light does sit real well, real nice and flush when it's in there properly. So what I'm going to do now is address the wiring for the tail light. i got to pull all the wires that are already in the back of the bike down, trim them the same length, and I'm going to add, uh, like I said, I'm just going to use bullet connectors so I can get that stuff in and out real easily. And then I'll put bolt connectors on the other side of these. Make sure that I have this like a good length where I can tuck everything up nicely in the fender. Um, the tail light, so this is just something uh, to note here. The tail light that's on the FXR grounds through the frame. So there is no black wire back there for the tail light. There's only, um, well, it's like a green and a red, which I think is run light and brake light. Um, and as you can see, this has a black wire for ground. So probably what I'm going to have to do is run this wire into um, like an eyelet and have it actually connected to like one of the, the mounting bolts on the back of the taillight to get my ground. 
unless one of those um, blinkers that the person put on there have a ground wire that I can extend out. I'll see. I have to take those wires up and, and kind of see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm back. This is to try to wrap up the third uh, episode on the FXR. Sorry if I'm repeating myself. This is, it's been probably about a good week before I started filming um, everything I was doing with uh, the tail light. But I ran into some really frustrating issues where I actually had to like give up on that day and take a step back because there were so many weird things happening I couldn't figure out. It was getting really frustrating. So I think I left off with cutting down the uh, tail light mount, um, which I did and that allowed the aftermarket taillight to fit on. So here's where I started running into problems. I hooked this all up and I put bullet connectors on, so I grounded the black wire to the mount. I have a wire that goes to the right turn signal, a wire to the left, a wire to the running light, a wire to the brake light. Pretty simple stuff. So I put it all together, but when I turned on the bike and turned on the blinkers, both turn signals would flash at the same time. Now this confused me because when I had the regular incandescent style turn signals hooked up, I had separation. Left would be left, right would be right. But as soon as I put the LED light on, both turn signals would flash. So it was frustrating me. I couldn't friggin' figure it out. Let me explain what happened. So, and this is just the beginning of the issues. On these old bikes, there's a single turn signal indicator. Um, it flashes regardless of if the right or left turn signal's on. The way this is hooked up is it sits in between the positives on both turn signals. So if positive, if 12 volts goes to either turn signal, this turn signal indicator lamp flashes. Here's the problem. That essentially shorts out the pins between both sides. Now that's not an issue when you're using incandescent lamps because they require so much voltage and power to flash. Um, but with an LED, there's a small amount of voltage that jumps from one side to the other. And with LEDs, because they require so little voltage, that makes both of them light up. Didn't know this, had no idea this was a thing. It makes perfect sense once I started like looking into it. Um, so, the interim fix is you just unplug the turn signal lamp. You unplug the turn signal lamp, you have perfect separation between the two turn signals. Left flashes and right flashes independently, but then of course you don't have a turn signal lamp. So, not a big deal. And, and there is a permanent fix that I'm going to do eventually where you basically change how the turn signal lamp's wired and one side goes to ground and the other sides go to the, the turn signals but with a diode in place so there's no voltage that jumps back the other direction. I haven't done that yet. Meanwhile, while I was working on all that and trying to figure that out, I was also wiring in the new turn signals that go up here, which turned out really great. They are like super hidden, which is awesome. So I was working on that, got the controls kind of where I wanted them and everything, and all of a sudden the bike started tripping. The One of the circuit breakers started tripping on the bike. So in the middle of trying to figure out why my blinkers aren't working, all of a sudden basically the entire bike stops working. And I could hear the circuit breaker like click and then a couple seconds later when it cools down it comes back on and then it would click and so I was doing that. So I had no idea what was going on. I had the headlight out so I started feeling around and looking in the wires and I noticed there was a particular wire that was really warm and when the circuit breaker went it would cool down and then when it turned back on it would get hot again. It was a gray wire that went to like this, the um, ignition on switch and start switch, they're kind of wired together. So that kind of gave me an indicator that something was wrong there. So I started pulling the controls apart, pulled this off. Come to find out I had pinched a wire in between the, uh, the clamp when I put the clamp on. Two wires got caught in between this on the bottom side and pinched the wires and shorted them out together. So I had to pull those buttons out of the controls unsolder the wires from them, put shrink tubing on them, reinstall them all back in here, fix that issue. This is still why I was trying to figure out what was going on with the headlights. This was the point where I had a little bit of a temper tantrum and I was like, okay, forget this for right now, and I stopped filming. Um, so fixed that up, came in and discovered the issue with the turn signal indicator causing both of them to flip. I actually found that on the internet, I think I, I looked it up. So, um, Got that resolved, and then I ended up going ahead and installing the turn signal on the handlebars and um, adding a wire loom in between the riser. And long story short, sorry, I know it's already not short. Everything's done, but I didn't film any of it because I was so irritated with all the weird things that are happening. But I would like to show you the end result here. So let me get my key. Sorry, I'm not filming with the 
I'm not filming with the gimbal because as usual, I'm too lazy. I put the key in here. Oh, you also probably noticed I got my Amazon headlight that looks suspiciously like a Moon's MC. Um, willing to bet it is. So now there's my front turn signals. Gorgeous, like totally hidden underneath the perches. They got this cool little like it lights up and then kind of turns after that. And I can adjust that flash rate with the um, turn signal relay that I got. You can actually speed them up or slow them down. I made them kind of slow. I don't want it to look as if I'm having hyper flash. And the back works as well. So, <laughs> end of the video basically. I got my LED uh, tail light in. You can do it too if you chop up the mount. I got my front turn signals on. Be real careful not to pinch wires. If you have issues with your both your LEDs blinking, unplug, and, and that's that's the beauty of this turn signal indicator on here. Is you don't need to cut wires. There's actually a plug, it's tucked down in here, but you can just unplug it. You won't have a turn signal indicator, but at least your LEDs will work. I also got my headlight and put it in, so that works really good. And you might have noticed that I have some bags on the bike as well. Let me turn my key off so I don't drain my battery. So um, I wanted some soft-sided bags like this. And um, I was looking at the thrashing, uh, the big thrashing bags, not essential, I forget what they're called, but they're like 350 bucks. So um, I ended up stumbling upon Viking bags, which makes a bag that looks oddly like the thrashing supply bags. And these were on sale for 120 plus shipping. So it was like 140 out the door, which is pretty cheap compared to the thrashing bags. Um, interesting thing, and I, I can't show you because I don't want, it was kind of a pain to put these on because the geometry of an FXR is very different from a Dyna, and I think these are made more for like a Dyna or Sportster. The uh, throwover doesn't go underneath the pillion completely, it sticks out. So I actually had to put a hole, like a hole into the bag throw over to be able to attach it, which looks kind of silly, but it is what it is. Anyway, I digress. What I was trying to say is if you pull the pillion off or the seat off and you look at the tag on these, they actually have a tag that says thrashing um, sissy bar bag. I have a feeling that these Viking bags are made by the same manufacturers who manufacture the thrashing bags. Um, virtually the only difference I can find is the label looks a little different on these, but every other detail is the same um, between these bags and the thrashing bags as far as I can tell. So obviously I don't have the thrashing bags to compare them side by side, but I got a couple buddies who do, so I'm going to actually do a comparison at some time, but they look oddly similar. So that was an excellent way to save money. So uh, initial stage of bars pegs leds is officially done um i had to work out my ergonomics on the front end a little bit to kind of mess with my bars to get them in a comfortable place i got that dialed now they're a little bit higher than i probably would have liked to have gone um ultimately i probably should have pulled some riser or bought some risers with a little bit of a pullback but um this company didn't make them and i really liked these ones and they were like the price was right so um i ended up going with the straight ones but i got it pretty dialed now it feels pretty comfortable so just in time for some information about my next set of videos. Um, after I got everything back together, I took it for a ride. And man, oh man, was that rocker box leaking. Every time I hit a stoplight, oil was dripping off of here onto the exhaust and smoking, which is incredibly embarrassing. Um, driving this cool old FXR and every time you stop, there's literally smoke like billing off the front end. Um, it's not the engine smoking, it's just literally burning off the hot exhaust pipe because it's dripping from here real bad. So, uh, my future videos here, probably in the next week or so, is going to have to be a pretty big set of videos because I have to pull the rocker boxes off to replace all the gaskets. Well, I decided if I'm going to pull off the rocker boxes top and mid and bottom, that I might as well pull off the heads and do the head gasket and pull off the cylinders and do the base gasket because this bike is 30 something years old and they're probably original. And even though it doesn't appear that the base gaskets are leaking now, they're gonna start leaking. And it's very possible that they are leaking actually because it's hard to see because it's dark in here, but there's oil all around the bottom here. Now, granted, I think that's coming from the tappet blocks, um, which will also 
have to be resealed. So um, I was hoping I could push this type of repair off for at least a couple months so I can enjoy riding the thing, but it's not gonna not gonna happen. So the next set of videos is going to be me essentially tearing the whole top end of this engine down to reseal it. Um, I'm also going to be installing a Andrews EV27 cam, um, updated bearing, rear cam bearing, uh, metal breather gear, and while I have all this stuff off, the exhaust and pedals and everything, I'm going to reseal the pump too. You see the oil pump here. Again, not majorly leaking, but you can see that there's oil on the outside of it. So these gaskets are on their way. So again, if I'm going to go through all the trouble of removing everything, I'm just going to go ahead and do that too. So oil pump, cam, gaskets here. I got new lifters going in since I'm making a new cam. Um, gaskets for the lifter blocks. Base gaskets, head gaskets, rocker box gaskets. But that being said, once I get all of that done and the engine's totally sealed up, hopefully I won't have any issues with oil seeping and I'll be able to install my new carburetor and put that two into one exhaust on here. And then with the cam, it's going to be feeling really good. So, um, <laughs> also another thing along with that, I've uh, come to realize that because it's had those big ape hangers on it, all the cables are like incredibly too long. I mean, there's just so much slack here uh, because they were four inches higher and wider with those last um, bars. So I'm also gonna be changing all the cables. I had already planned to change the, uh, the throttle cables with my carb swap, but I'm gonna do the brake line and the clutch cable as well. So all that has been ordered. I'm waiting for those parts to come in. Huge jobs. Um, again, not what I was hoping to be doing here right away since I barely got to ride this thing, but it needs to be done. So. I'm going to go ahead and just get it over with. Um, but yeah, that's the plan. So sorry I didn't film much with the turn signals and everything. It was just so frustrating dealing with those weird little gremlins. So um, again, moral of the story and really aligns with the name of the channel. On an older bike like this, sometimes it's not just that easy, which everyone told me. Um, thankfully, I'm up for the challenge. I enjoy running into those issues and figuring them out and uh, troubleshooting and looking at wiring diagrams like it doesn't bug me so but i'm really happy with the way this turned out front end looks really nice and clean and uh you know getting rid of turn signals and everything and it's a little bit more modernized with the headlight so it looks good right now i'm collecting information about what i exactly need to do when it comes time to put the head gaskets on um trying to focus on the head bolts but it's not working um there's a lot of conflicting information on the internet and even from shops, um, whether or not I should be replacing the studs that run through and the bolts. Um, I saw videos on YouTube where they said absolutely replace the bolts. And I called two shops in the area that are not, not Harley shops, but shops that work exclusively on Harleys and performance applications. They said there's no reason to replace those. Um, so I think I'm not going to, because these are actually pretty expensive. So like these stupid bolts, all eight of them is like 120 bucks. Um, so let's see where I get. Hopefully that doesn't end up being a mistake. I'm sure there's people out there that are going, well, if you're pulling it apart, you might as well replace them. Yeah, but these have hardly any mileage on them, so I think I'm fine. Um, one shop said, while I have it open, I should absolutely replace the rings, even though it only has 9,000 miles. Another shop said, that's just a big waste of time to replace the rings. Just don't mess the orientation of the rings up. Pull them off carefully and you can reuse them the same. Um, again, I'm leaning towards that because it's a little less work and it's already going to be a lot of work, so... We'll see, maybe I'll end up being a mistake and I'll have to pull them off again, but oh well, that'll just be part of the adventure, I suppose, so. But, yeah. Uh, tune back in for all those videos. Not sure how much of it I'll be able to film because my hands are gonna be busy. Well, anyway, thank you for watching. Um, please check out my other videos, uh, video one and two about this bike to kind of see where we ended up. Please like and subscribe if you could share this uh, channel with other you know, people who might be interested in uh, moto vlog videos. I'd really appreciate that to try to get some action on the channel um again if if the, no one's watching i probably won't go through this trouble but i appreciate those who have been watching and commenting it's really awesome so thank you and we'll see you around